10.2, use combinations and binomial theorems. First, we're going to start with combinations. So, we talked about permutations on Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. And permutations is when order matters in something, okay? A combination order does not matter, okay? So, the number of combinations of R objects taken from a group of indistinct objects is denoted by NCR. Once again, if you press that PRB button, you're going to see NCR on there, okay? And it's given by this formula. The permutation of N, okay, the permutation of N over the permutation of N minus your rate times your rate permutation. That's because order does not matter in this one. So if the order doesn't matter of how things occur or the events that take place, we use combinations. If order matters, we use permutations. Okay? You okay? No. <laughs> okay, so then that takes us to this. We're going to do lots of word problems. I got 11 slides, lots of examples. Oh. A standard deck of 52 playing cards has four suits with 13 cards in each suit. If the order in which the cards are dealt is not important, how many different five card hands are possible? How would I set that up? Um, 52, 52 times 13 times 52. No, it will be over. Over 52 minus 13. No, 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 no. How many different five card hands are possible? How many cards are you drawing? Five. Five. So it's 52. Minus five. Yeah. So 52 C5, which is the same as saying 52 over 52 minus 5 times 5. Yes? Put it in your calculator. 52 combination 5. What do you get? Great. I want to know what that very big number two, is. 258960. Yes. 2598980. So 2598960 different combinations can happen. When the order doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many cards you like uh, what the deal is. It just matters that you choose five cards out of a 52 card deck. Now, part B says, in how many five card hands are all five cards of the same color? Okay? How many five card hands are all five cards of the same color? There's two things happening here. We're drawing five cards again, yes? But out of how many this time? 47. No. How many five card hands are all five cards the same color? So look at that example they give you over there with 50 card, 52 card deck. How many colors are there? Two. Two. And how many colors, um, how many cards are in each color? No, 13's in each suit. How 26. many? 26. 26. So if I'm taking five cards from the same color, what does that mean I'm drawing from this time? 26. 26 instead of 52. But, so you have 26 C5. But, how many suits are there? Or how many, uh, not suits, how many colors are there total? Two. two. And I just want one of the two colors. So it's actually a combination of multiplying stuff together. I want one of the two colors, and I want five of that color. Does that make sense what I'm doing? What is 2C1? What is something C1 always? Two. It's always whatever number is here. Okay. And what is 26 C5? 65,780. 65,780? Mm-hmm. 65,000. <laughs> oh, wait, what did you say? 65,780. 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65,
So that's how many options you have when you want five cards of the same color. Okay? Now, moving on to another example. When finding the number of ways both an event A and an event B can occur, you need to multiply as in part B of example one, what we just did. You need to multiply when you're finding event A and event B. Okay? When finding the number of ways that event A or B can occur, you add. So when it says and, you multiply. When it says or, you add. And is multiply, or means add. Okay? That takes us to this. William Shakespeare wrote 38 plays that can be divided into three genres. Of the 38 plays, 18 are comedies, 10 are um, histories, and 10 are tragedies. How many different sets of exactly two comedies and one tragedy can you read? Take it one step at a time. There's two things it's asking. And multiply. Yes, and multiply. Okay. Because it says and, one tragedy. Okay. Exactly two comedies. Okay, so start there. I need to figure out what the option is for two comedies. So what is it? 18C2? Good. 18C2. Because there are 18 total comedies and I want two of them. Times, because Maddie told us it says and. 10C1. Good. 10C1. We know 10C1 equals what? 10. 10. What is 18C2? 153. Yeah. And then let's multiply 153 and 10 together and you get? 10,000. So when you are looking for a combination of exactly two comedies and one tragedy, you have 1,530 different combinations you could read of Shakespeare plays. Oh, guardian, I don't want to read any of them. <laughs> <laughs> and for B, it says, how many different sets of at most three plays can you read? That does not have the word and or or in it. Uh, it says what? What's highlighted at there? At most. At most. Meaning, I could read three plays, or two. I could read two, or one, one or zero. zero, which is Alex's choice in this case. So you have to do each one. Yes, and add them together. Okay? So, if I chose zero, how many total plays are there now? 38. So I have 38C0 zero. plus 38 what? C1. C1. Plus 38C2. And C2. Okay, so 30 uh, C0 is always what? 1. 38 C1 is? And then we need to figure out what 38 C2 and 38 C3. Okay, and what's 38 C3? 8,436. Now add all those together. 9,178. 9, 9, <laughs> so, if you are reading at most three, you have 9,178 different combinations of what you could read of Shakespearean plays. Sounds thrilling. Okay. Counting problems that involve phrases like at least or at most, what we just did are sometimes easier to solve by subtracting po uh, possibilities you do not want from the total number of possibilities. Here's why. Let's say it does this. It says, um, out of the 120 options, you want at least five of them. That means I would do the, the combination five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 120 and add it together, yes? Would it be quicker for me to take the total and subtract from it what I don't want, the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 added together. Much faster. Okay, so that's what they're saying. They're saying if um, you're trying to solve something, it might be easier instead of adding to subtract. Does that make sense? So, it says basketball. During basketball, um, during the school year, the girls' basketball team is scheduled to play 12 games. You want to attend at least three of the games. How many different combinations of games can you attend? So would it be easier to add 3, 4 through 12 up, or would it be subtract. easier to subtract 0, 1, and 2 from it? 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so let's talk about how you find the total. Okay, this is how you find the total. 
How many options are there when it comes to going to each game? Twelve. Twelve. Thirty-six. No, no, there are twelve total games. Yes. How many options? I can either go or I can not, not, go. not go. So there are two options for twelve games. Okay. <laughs> so to figure out the total number of option or the total number of possibilities for going or not going, you would take the two options and you would raise it to the twelfth power for the number of games. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. So if I had a multiple choice test, and there are 16 multiple choice questions with four answers possible on each of them, I would take four and raise it to 16 to figure out how many total options I have to answer. Yeah. Okay. Here, I can either go to the game or not go to it, so I take two and raise it to the 12 games. Okay. So if I do two to the 12, I first have to start there because that's going to tell me how many total options I have. If I do 2 to the 12, you get 4,096 Four thousand ninety-six total options of going to games or not in the season. We want to subtract from it what? Okay, we want to subtract um, all the 12C0, 12C1, 12C2, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I do 12C0 plus 12C1 plus 12C2, what is 12C0? One. One. Twelve. And then 12. And then what's 12C2? 66. 66? So what is 4,096 minus 79? 4,000. So you have 4,017 combinations or options of going to basketball games this season, if you go to three or more. It's much quicker to add these three up and subtract it from the total than to add all of those other ones up together. Just trying to save you time. Does that make sense so far? You always have to start at zero and make your way up, yes. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you're going to 120, up to 120. Okay, it depends what your total is and how many you want from that total. Mm -hmm. How come you added C12 and R? Because I am not going to, to possibly three games. Okay. I could not go to 0 of them, I could not go to 1, or I could not go to 2. So I have to add all those possible not goings and subtract it from the total. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then we get, well, I think you can just plug stuff into your calculator, right? Can we handle that part? Okay. So then we get something called Pascal's Triangle. Now this actually is a lifesaver in the long run. Okay, this is really cool. It helps you in the long run. If you arrange the values of combinations in CR in a triangular pattern in which each row corresponds to the value of n. You get what's called Pascal's triangle, okay? So this is what happens. If I take the first row and it's a zero row, zero C zero comes out to equal the number one, okay? If you take one C zero, you get the number one. If you take one C one, you get the number one, okay? That makes sense, we know those rules, okay? Pascal's triangle, um, shown below, with its entries represented by combinations and with its entries represented by numbers. The first and last numbers in each row are one. Every number other than one is the sum of the closest two numbers in the row directly above it. So, 2C0 is one, but 2C1 is this one and one added together. And then I get a one. Then if I come down to the third row, 3C0 is one. 3C2 is 2 and 1 added together. 3C3 is 2 and 1 added together. Okay. And then 3C... Um, that sounds like some Star Wars stuff. Yeah, and then 3C3. <laughs> so I'm like 3CPO. Yeah. Okay. So everything adds to make what's above it. So the fourth row, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. The fifth row, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. 
What would be the sixth row? Good question. Six, uh, one, 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 six, one, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, twenty, fifteen, six, one. Whoa, stop the press. And you could keep going from there. We can there. go to ten, because that's what we got to do. That is what we have to do eventually. You are right. Actually, so, I think I no, I'm really But also, Freddie, if I plug into my calculator, 5C1, I'm going to get, um, well, if I plug into my calculator, this represents right here, 6C0, 6C1. 6C2. So when I plug 6C2 in, I'm going to get 15. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. But what they're saying is, if I asked you what the 120th row was, it would be easier to figure out what the 120, what the 119th row was, and then just add them together from there, than doing all of this math individually. Okay. Now, here's what they want next. Okay. It says the six members of a model UN club must choose two representatives to attend a state convention. Use Pascal's triangle to find the number of combinations of two members that can be chosen as representatives. That's why I had you give me the sixth row already. What would be, well, how would I set that up first of all in combination form if I used the letter C? What am I taking out of how many? Two. two. Well, six. So you want, yes, you want two out of six. So you want one? Six C two. Which of these is six C two? A fifteen. Remember, this is six C zero, six C one. So my answer is fifteen. There are fifteen different combinations of that. Okay. That's what they're looking for. So it's however many it's out of is the row you're going to, and then how many you want is the number you go to that it corresponds with. Now, this is something called binomial expansion. Okay? Listen, this is a pattern. If you memorize the pattern, you will be fine. It's only a pattern. What it is saying is this. Um, there's a relationship between powers and binomials and combinations. The numbers in Pascal's triangle can be used to find coefficients in a binomial expansion. For example, the coefficients of the expansion of A plus B to the fourth are numbers of combinations in the row of Pascal's triangle for N equals four. Okay, so for the fourth row, it's an expansion of that. Okay? So what happens is this. The first one is A to the fourth. Okay? And I'm going to count my A's down from there as I count my B's up from there. Okay? So A to the fourth, there is no B because 0 plus 4 is 4. This is 4C0. Okay? That's what goes here. 4C1 is this number right here. And it's A cubed B because the exponents add to be 4 still. Then I go 4C2, which gives me 6. I have A squared and B squared. 4C3, which gives me 4, and I have A, B cubed. 4C4, which gives me 1, and I have B to the 4th. Your combination or your pattern is always as follows. <coughs> if you have <coughs> A plus B to the N, that means you have N, C, 0, A to the N, B to the 0. Okay? Plus N, C, 1. A to the n minus 1, b to the first, plus n c 2, a to the n minus 2, b squared, plus, and so on and so forth, till you get to the number 6 or 12 or whatever your power is. Okay, so we're going to practice two of them. So this one says y squared plus, um, or x squared plus y cubed. Okay, so it's x squared plus y, um, and then it's all cubed, okay? So if I want to start, first of all, what do I start with combination-wise? X. No, com combination-wise. Let's start this. So what would be your n? Three. Yes. What would technically be your a on this? X. X what? Squared. 
squared. And what is your B on this? Y. Okay. So the first thing says that you need to do N, C, 0, A to the N, B to the 0. So what's your N? 3. three. So you have 3, C, 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your A is? X squared. And it is to what power in this case? Three. To the third. And do you have a Y on this one? No, because this is already to the third, and this number needs to match this number. Okay. Your exponents together have to add to match this number that leads. Now, if this is 3C0, what's next? 3C1. 3C1. And your A was x squared. What power is it to now? Uh, 3 minus 1. Yep, which is? 2. two. And then you have what here? Y. Y, and it's to what power technically? One. The first. 1. Okay. Then I have what next? 3C2. Yep, 3C2. And it's x squared to what power? 1. 1. And then it's y to what power? Squared. Yep. And then I have 3C3. And do I have an x squared? No. But I have a y cubed. Now, what is 3C0? 1. So here I have what's x squared cubed? X to the 6. So you have x to the 6 when you break this down. What's 3C1? Three, 3. 3. And then you have x squared squared, which gives you? And then you have? Y. What's 3C2? Meaning, if you look back at Pascal's triangle, which is on page 692, you can look and see what 3C2 is. 3. It's 3? Yep. And so then I have 3, and I have x squared, y squared. X squared, uh, no, x squared, y squared, yes. And then, what's 3C3? Three, 1. 1, so I am left with? And that is my binomial expansion. Whoa, that's why. <laughs> my brainers. We're going to do another one. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's do a minus 2b to the 4th. Okay. So our n is 4. Our n is 4. Our a is a. <laughs> n equals 4. a equals a. m i b equals what? Um, um, yes, negative 2b. You have to put that whole thing with the b. Negative 2b. Right? Yes. So, never mind. I, never mind. Okay. My brain answered it first. <laughs> Your brain answered it. Yeah. That's good. I kind of think it. Okay. Now, what do I do from there? Okay. I want it written. Uh, first, you four, always need to write it this way. 4 C O. Okay. 4 C 0 times um, A. A to what power? I'll say A equals A. To the yep. Four. To the fourth. Ooh, yeah. A to the fourth. There is no B on this one. Okay. Now what? Plus plus four C one. Okay, and then what? Times A to the fourth. No. No third. Is third. And then what? Y. No. C A to the third. Negative that is two two B. Okay, and what power is it technically to? First. Okay, but well, I'm not gonna put that because we don't plus need it. four C two. Okay, A to square. The second. Negative two b squared. Yeah. Good. And then what? Plus four c four. How about three? Three, sorry. Three. A to a. Oh, a. And then negative two b cubed. Okay. And then plus. Oh, I'll read. And then plus four c four times negative two b to the fourth. There is no a on the last one. There's no b on the first one. There's no a on the last one. Okay, 4C0 is? 1. So I just get? A to the 4th. Okay, what is 4C1? 4. Okay, but I have a negative 2, so I actually have to multiply those together. So what's 4 times negative 2? Negative And then you get negative 8A <coughs> cubed B, yes? Yes. Okay, what's 4C2? Um, negative 2. But then look, I have 
negative 2 squared. What's negative 2 squared? 4. And 4 times 6 is? 24. 24. 24. <laughs> so you get 24 A squared, B squared. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, okay. Plus, what's 4 C? 3. 4. 4. What's negative 2 cubed? Uh, 4. How about negative 8? Negative 8. What's negative 8 times 4? 32. 32. Negative 32. Negative 32. So you get negative 32. A. B. B. Good. And then what's 4C4 four again? 1. 1. And what's negative 2 to the 4th? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 16. 16B to the 4th. Four. That's that binomial expansion. Oh my god. Okay. You need to show me it listed this way and then show me it this way. I need you to get in the habit of doing it. Okay? Are we done? Yeah, because I'm not going to make you do the next one because it's to the 10th. Thank you. Okay? Now listen. Your homework is listed on the board. 